Whoa, the Queen's funeral almost outrated the Empire finale. Welcome to Open Mic. We like to start the show with a few stories or a high take on a story you're not likely to see anywhere else. I'm from gorgeous Prince George's, and now I spill the tea in DC, so you know these jokes come from a place of love. Let's start things off here in the district, in our viewing area where a Forbes advisor survey of confrontational driving found that Maryland drivers are actually worse than Virginia drivers, and by a wide margin. Now, I will just say, I call nonsense. And before y'all get mad and start writing letters, remember, I'm just the messenger. Y'all take that off-road rage to Forbes, because they are the ones responsible for this slander. Maryland ranked as the seventh most aggressive state in the country. Virginia landed way down at number 44 on the list. Now, let me first say, I'm not surprised by Maryland being in the top 10, because I have seen that with my own eyes. But how in the world did Virginia end up so low? Researchers came to their findings by polling 5,000 drivers around the country and asking them if they had encountered a number of rude and aggressive actions. Everything from, quote, honked at me in frustration to, quote, pointed a gun at me or shot me. Um, uh, <laughs> pointed a gun at me or shot me. Uh, you know, I guess one of the most underreported after effects of being shot is uh, getting a negative Yelp review. They went from aggressive to homicidal. Like, I don't feel comfortable making jokes about Maryland drivers now if that's what they talk about. Y'all not going to literally pull up on me. Let's come together and make fun of some place we can all agree is worse, Utah, which came in at number one on the list. And that makes a lot of sense because if I had to root for the Jazz, I'd be angry too, especially the Jazz next year. They're going to be making their own jerseys. We're staying in D.C. for this next story where the Smithsonian's Air and Space Museum has released five possible designs for their upcoming Bezos Learning Center, and all of them look like something from a sci-fi film. Now, this clearly has Amazon written all over it. You remember the HQ2 building design in Arlington that came out looking like a chrome poop emoji? Those new designs are right on brand, because none are perfect particularly terrible, but they're all going to look weird next to the timeless designs of the DC landmarks all around it. The Washington Monument, inspired by ancient Egyptian symbolism. The Lincoln Memorial, reminiscent of ancient Greek architecture. And of course, the Bezos Center, a giant metal robot olive. Like I said, the designs aren't bad, but they're going to look weird here. These look like what people thought the future would look like in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. If there's one thing that we know, they were wrong about a lot of things in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. But Jeff Bezos put up the money for this, and he's been to space, and I haven't. So, hey, I almost guess I'll stop making fun of his vision. Let's take a trip to Maryland for this next story, where the state has eradicated an invasive rodent species called Nutria that looked like a rat and beaver had a very special evening with prominent orange teeth. Now, I know what you're thinking. That thing looks relatively harmless and its name sounds like vitamins. That's what I thought myself. But don't let the smooth taste fool you. Nutria have been wreaking havoc on Maryland's ecosystem since they were first brought over from South America in 1889 for fur farming. Fortunately for them, people like mink coats better than Nutria coats. And when the Nutria fur market collapsed around 1940, thousands of them escaped from farms or were set free by farmers. Now, after investing two decades and $30 million in the effort to combat the problem, Nutria have been eradicated from Maryland, which certainly gives me hope. Let's hope, let's get these same people to get rid of DC's rats next. If they're that good, oh yeah, two decades and $30 million, that is a small price to pay. It means no more rats jumping out while I'm minding my own business in the district. I want my baby to view her daddy as a hero. I can't have her see me scream bloody murder at such a formative age. But congratulations to the state of Maryland and a moment of silence for all the Nutria homies that we've lost. It's been a long day without you, my friend. I can tell you all about it when I see you again. Pour out a little something. What do you pour out for Nutria? All right, I chose this last story because today is a day of great significance. For today is National Talk Like a Pirate Day. Arr, shiver me timbers, yo ho ho, and a bottle of Henny. Y'all know what it is. I couldn't let this day go by without talking like a pirate. 
It's 7 p.m., but everybody watching still has time to use pirate talk in casual conversation. I encourage all of you to walk up to a loved one, stare at them intensely and say, look at me, I'm the captain now. Now, they didn't specify what kind of pirate. It's a made up holiday. Get as creative with it as you want. All pirates are fair game from Jack Sparrow to Captain Crunch. Just don't do it at work like I'm doing or eventually you may come out talking Jamaican. I don't understand. Why does my pirate end up Jamaican all of the time? I refuse to be held responsible if you threaten to make a co-worker walk the plank after getting a per my last year. Now he sounds Irish or Scottish. I don't know where this accent is going. My favorite story, it's got to be the Forbes advisor, aggressive driving survey. I have no control of my accent. DC wasn't included. I'm one of the few times that not having statehood actually worked for us. Lord have mercy.